Yeah, lots of great points there around the power of this, you know, type of experience, I guess you would say. And you're actually teeing me up for the question I wanted to ask before (laughs) I asked you the last one, which is, um, and I'm sure you've noticed it too, but I mean, traditionally podcasts were just audio Mm. and now you see more video. I mean, I'm seeing more and more video type podcasts. And so I would love to understand your perspective on that. Do you think video podcasts are, you know, more effective than just audio? It probably is highly dependent on who you're targeting. My guess, that's my guess, but super curious to to hear your thoughts on the shift to more of these video based yeah. podcasts. Yeah, this is this is I think something that it's a nut a lot of people are trying to crack right now. There are some people who would gladly have a pedantic conversation a protracted pedantic conversation around what is a podcast, right? Does it need to be audio? Does it need to be delivered through an RSS feed? Do you have to listen to it in Apple podcasts or Spotify or another RSS based uh, podcasting app, right? We we could argue that till we were blue in the face about what gets to count as a podcast. What I care about is what the listeners, my clients are trying to reach think a podcast is. And I, I would push back against the idea that a podcast is, uh, is just the audio file or that a podcast has to be consumed inside what most people would call a traditional podcast app. I think less about, you know, drawing a box around a podcast and think more about the idea of a show and a show can have many different expressions. So I'll give you an example. In my spare time, I make a podcast called Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is recordings of adults reading childhood and teenage writing. It's a podcast. It's an MP3 file. It's a series of MP3 files. It's based on a live event, a live event that happens in theaters. We have a YouTube channel. We have social accounts. We we post clips on the YouTube (laughs) account. We post different kinds of things on our social accounts. The audio expression of the show is different than the feeling that you have when you're live in the room at one of our events. All of it's the show. And to say that we're, we're a podcast, that is true. We're also a live event. We're also a YouTube channel. We're also right. So I think less about how can we silo these things and more about how can we connect the dots and meet people where they are in the way that they want to engage with us. Uh, so Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote As Kids, it's a show that has lots of different expressions. And I think podcasters of all kinds would be well served to think more about what are the different expressions of our show and how do we play to the strengths of the distribution platform or the medium we're working in, right? So. Yes, you can have a podcast that lives as MP3 files and is listened to inside Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It can also have a life and a community and a group of people who engage with it on YouTube. And maybe there's a video component to it. Maybe there's an animation component to it. Maybe you're posting full episodes. Maybe you're posting clips or excerpts or just trailers. Maybe the video part of it is purely promotional, and maybe it's just another way to reach people who would prefer to listen inside YouTube with their screen off. And I don't think any of that's wrong. I think it's about meeting, meeting the audience you care about, where they are, and figuring out how do we play to the strengths of the places that we're in, especially when that's somebody else's platform, like Spotify, like YouTube, like social platforms. <laughs> 